On today's video, I will be explaining my uh, the charge system, how I have everything hooked up inside my bike as plain and simple as I can. Uh, I will be pulling apart my bike and showing you as well as uh, drawing up a diagram at the end to explain everything. I'll have links to all the parts down below. I've, I've had a lot of interest uh, on how it's all hooked up and how it all works. So it's actually pretty simple. Uh, it's just a lot of cutting plugs off and putting things to breakers and, and well, you'll see. So stay tuned. So first thing we do is we got to get this thing pulled apart. So first you got to take this little piece off. And then it's just this screw and that comes off. And then you got to take this piece off. There's a screw up here and then there's a screw under here once you get this off to take that off. Do that on both sides and then there's a screw under the seat. I'll show you that in a minute once I get these things off. Well, I'll get this one off and I'll be right back. Once you have the screw out, this just pops up and off like that. Okay, so put that aside. Now, under here, as you can see, well, you'll probably have an Allen key, but I have a screw here. So you take this one out, and you take this one out up here, and then we'll be back. To, oh, and pull, see this one right here? This one under the seat? You're going to want to pull that one out, too. Do that on both sides. Once you've got those bolts out, you can go ahead and just lift that panel up and pull it off. And then your seat lifts up. Okay, there we go. Pull up and off that way. Okay. So now we're to the tank. Now normally, like I said, I've had this bike almost two years. You will have two nice bolts here. You're gonna want to take those bolts out. I can just twist that out by hand. And then you'll have a bolt here on either side of the tank. Lift your tank up from the back, but make sure it clears these little tabs right here. So that the tank goes under them. It's really hard to do with one hand. Oh, there we go. Let's see. Them. And then you can take it off. Okay, so that's as pretty much as far as you need to take the bike apart. Uh, if you look down inside, you see the battery. All right, you've got your main connector coming out, but then you've got this other little connector coming out right here. All right, it goes to that, and then on the other side of the connector, it goes under here, and I'll show you on the other side. If you go up under here, this is normally where the Talio charges right here, but I've bent mine up out of the way. Okay, now on the other side of that charge port, you had this. Right, let's see, this is where the charge port was. I cut it off. And then these wires obviously connect to that connector, right? So what I did instead is when I cut that connector off, it's basically like lay this out it's basically like running it to the charger right like here's the charger here's the part that normally plugged into the bike so you cut that off you run that to some breakers and then out to the plug that goes to the battery to charge so this is like plugging in the charger and then unplugging the charger that's all that basically does so that goes up to the charger <clears throat> flip this over hold on as you can see, it's just a 84 volt 10 amp. So on the other side, so that's that side. That just goes to the charge, to the battery. And it's got a breaker in the middle where you used to plug it in. The other side, that normally wants the wall, still goes to the wall on the white cord. But then I just split it off here. And then it goes to the J plug. And I'll explain what the J plug is uh, in a moment. And then once it's all hooked up, you just zip tie your charger in between your controller and your seat bar and hook the cord in where it's supposed to go and run the other wires up and install the breaker under your seat. All right, now we're going to go inside and I'll explain it all on paper. These are the three major parts we will be focusing on and I will include links in the description. This is the sorry the j1772 to uh pev adapter uh that you're gonna need and this uh, i i have two of these but uh you could use the the double pull it just makes it easier 
so you can throw them both at once you don't have to click one then click the other like I have to and these are you don't want these these are like one voltage in to the same on both you don't want the the 1p 1p you want either the 1p or the 2p I would go with the 2p so that's that's the breakers like I said everything will be linked in the descriptions and there's the charger 84 volt 10 amp also linked in the description so this is your basic battery in a bike okay you got your battery pack and then they run out of the battery pack into the little connector I showed you and then from the connector out to the charge port on the side of the bike where you plug your charger into so that being said oh, this is pretty much what's going on inside your bike here's the 84 volt uh, the, the battery and then you've got like an Anderson connector plug going out to the bike and then you've got this one going to the charge port right here and in between there's that that little clip okay so here's your charger so basically you plug your charger into the pipe into the port on the bike right so obviously just like normal and then you would plug it out and into the wall and that's how you would normally charge your bike okay I've basically done the same thing except for on this side I have cut this charge port out on both the bike side and the charger side and that's where I have my breaker okay so then obviously these wires go into the breaker and then back out of the breaker into the charger All right so if I flick the breaker off it's like I've unplugged the bike from the charger if I flick the breaker on it's like I have plugged the bike back into the charger okay so that's pretty much how the breaker side works straightforward just get, take your ports off and put them to a breaker because it's all going inside right so you don't want to have to go inside your bike to plug the port in every time you want to charge your bike so if you put it to a breaker you can just flick the switches and you're charging okay now on the wall side the people who live in canada and other countries that have 110 volt ac you have to get a charger that is rated anywhere between 110 and 240 volt ac otherwise you cannot go level two you need the 240 to go level two or at least 220 to go level two uh but if you've most things above 10 amps most chargers above 10 amps only have 220 to 240 volt ac they don't do 110 so this is the only one i've actually been able to find by this company uh the yang c or uh, yz power uh, chargers are the only ones that have a 110 to 240 volt AC automatic switching so there's no little switch on the side you got to set you can either plug in one or the other and it just does it automatically it's the only one I found so okay normally this is where it would go out to the 110 plug on the wall right you can plug it in any old standard wall plug and this is that J port I showed you um, so basically you're gonna cut the three prong off the J plug and then wire these in with the existing 110 cable get it so now you don't plug them both in at the same time so now you can either have your 110 plugged in or if you don't want to use your 110 you can go up to your EV 240 station and plug your little J plug into it so there you go that's pretty much it like i said you got two cords coming out the plug side you can either get your voltage from your level two station or you can get your voltage from a wall and they both come into the charger and then that powers the charger and then when you flick this breaker it turns the charger on and starts to charge the battery and that's all there is to it and then on mine inside the charger there's like these little leds that that show it's charging or whatever so i just soldered out from those up to my dash to that little to that little box you see on my dash that has those two little green lights on it this one is power on and this one is state of charge so when the second light goes out, I'll know that the charger's done charging. I can flick the breakers, turn off the charger to the bike, and then unplug it from whatever the heck I got it plugged into. I'm going to show you underneath the tank in a moment. Uh, it wasn't easy. I had to like lop the bottom of this thing off to get it to fit over the controller and uh, do some other stuff to the tank to actually get the J plug to fit in properly.
uh, the original flap that used to clip on that came with it I just cut it off and glued it onto the cap so it does make a, a proper water seal it doesn't get any water into my plug um, I had to cut out all here to get it to fit and then I had to cut out all this and shave off a little here and here otherwise the uh, the J plug when I when I had it plugged in and I was charging it has like a little safety clip on it to pull it back out of the bike and it would it would get stuck I couldn't get it out so the one day I had to fight with one for like 20 minutes it's like yeah I'm I'm gonna cut that big hole in there so that's what I had to do and then like I said I wired it up I gotta trim the bottom of this plastic but I wired up the lights from the charger right to there all right one thing you have to remember about these EV charge stations um, they're not chargers, okay? These things, all they do is they supply you 240 volt AC at whatever kilowatt it says. On an e-bike or really an electric car, there is an onboard charger or an offboard charger for most e-bikes, except for, you know, people like me who build them into our bikes. You need a charger. Th those stations are just supplying you power. They do not handle the charge. They, they don't handle any part of that. They just make sure that your Biker car is an EV, and when it recognizes it's an EV, that's what you need that J plug for uh, that I showed you on the laptop. Once you, once it shows that you're an EV, it will supply the power to your charger that you've bought. The EVs, the level twos, are not chargers. Okay, so that being explained. A lot of people asking me how long it takes me to charge my bike from empty. I mean, like, that's probably my number one question. Uh, to tell you the truth, probably between an hour and two hours from empty. Um, that's depending on if my battery's cold, if it's hot, you know, stuff like that. Um, so because I have a 10 amp charger, it allows me to charge between one and two hours from empty to full. Um, if I want to charge faster than that, unfortunately, I'd have to lose the 110 option. Uh, I've looked and looked on AliExpress, eBay. I've looked everywhere. Uh, as far as it stands right now, um, there's no 110 to 240 automatic charger that can do above 10 amps. So, I mean, if I could find a 20 amp charger, I could probably charge the whole bike from empty in like half hour, 45 minutes. But, you know, I'm limited to the 10 amps the charger I could find so so there you go it takes about an hour or two anywhere in between there usually around an hour hour and a half to, to get from empty to full off my current charger with my current setup uh, usually the longer time is when I'm plugged into the 110 for some reason the the 110 it, it does charge a little slower my charger there's there's like a, a five volt they're a 5 amp charger and a 5 amp charger and they're both hooked up in parallel to supply the 10 amp. So what I'm thinking is going on is when you have it plugged into the 110, you're only charging it like 5 amp. That would make sense. And when you have the uh, level 2 plugged in, you're charging it the full 10 amp. And that's why there's a difference in time on, you know, because 2 hours from empty, worst case scenario from a wall plug, 1 hour from empty, worst case scenario on a level 2. So... I hope that answers that question. I hope that explained everything you needed to know about uh, having a level two charger on your e-bike. Um, I mean, if you wanted to, you could buy one of those those charge ports and a charger. I mean, just plug the charger into your bike instead of plugging it into the wall. Plug it into the level two J plug thing you bought, and then plug the level two uh, station into the J plug and you don't have to put anything internally uh, if you don't want to, but I wanted it all built into my bike. So that's why I went through all these extra steps and everything. So I hope that explained everything. Um, if you enjoyed it and you want to see more, check out this video right here. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. I need those and we'll catch you on the next one. The real reason I want to upgrade my controller.